everyone, I am Frida Hero and welcome to today's episode where I'm going to be reviewing the Adhortive Pulse Rifle while also providing you the ideal god roll for you to get and some pros and cons behind it. The Adhortive is a legendary 390 RPM Pulse Rifle that can be gotten by a world drop from the Moon Vex Invasions, a Chorus Bounties or doing the Vex Offensive content. Based off the Year 1 variant from the DLC we shall not name, this version now comes with the ability to have random rolls and provide a large number of different perk variations that you can go ahead and grind for. It's also the note that this weapon's frame and general design as well was present in D1 as both a legendary that you got at the end of the story mission and an exotic with a few modifications provided. Capable of covering mid to long range grounds with effective ease, this weapon is a nice contender to have if you don't have an adaptive frame such as the last pair edition for your energy slot or if you're looking to move away from bygones but still want the effective feel that the weapon frames offer. It comes with a number of perks both new and old that would definitely make you want to sort after with its flexibility and its TDK all being in a very nice spot. But first let's take a look at what we're dealing with. Impact 29, a range 47, stability 55, handling 48, reload 45, aim assist 61, recoil direction 61, zoom 17 and a magazine of 37. Now the stats shown seem to indicate that it's heading into the right direction but needs a few pushes here and there to fully bring out its good side. Its stability and aim assist are above 50 and are in a nice spot which is what we should be aiming for but we could buff aim assist a tad higher for sticky shots along the ranges, especially for the adaptive fringe we don't have that much of a downside in terms of usage. Its range handling reload speed do need to be improved on though but not that badly since they only require a minimal amount of boost which can be achieved by the battle choices or the magazine choices. A recoil direction on the other hand is good but it does need to be corrected so it can have a more vertical fire rate. At the moment once fired it will drift to the right but softly. We can add a counterbalance mod to this which will fix the stat up and completely make it a bit more noticeable for mainly console players. Mouse and keyboard players won't notice much of a change as recoil drift is a lot more calmer and controllable but it is still recommended to add one to make it a laser at further distances. Except from that, the weapon is in quite a good spot but just needs a few pushes here and there. Its TDK now is very optimal, only requiring 5 crits and 2 bodies to kill. With a TDK of 0.93, so a average one at best, its body TDK comes to a 1.40 and requires at least 10 shots to kill if you aim at the body only, which is not ideal for most people but hey yo, here's, that's something for you to go ahead and work with. Now currently on the screen you can see how his TDK is affected if the following damage and buff and perks become active. Currently only Rampage and Multi Kill Clip can roll for this weapon, but surprisingly do well for the weapon and reduces TDK from a 0.93 to around a 0.47 or a 0.53, or generally 0.50 in general. This also reduces the number of shots required for the user, so instead of needing at least 2 to 3 ish bursts to kill, you only need 2 bursts which if you're going to be using a lot for PvP, is definitely what you want to be heading for. Now like I said before, the weapon doesn't have a lot of downside to it, which thankfully means there's not a lot we need to go in terms of discussing on how to improve it or what we need to make it to be more viable, but just remember, just because I don't find nothing wrong with the weapon, doesn't mean you won't find it. The only downside of the weapon I can think of is the scope, which is very small and hard to use in terms of locking down on some people, plus with the recoil direction can make it quite distracting to use, but I found that this is more of a personal thing than a major issue for us to overlook and oversee in the weapon. But anyways, let's have a look at the perks that the weapon can roll and what you should be hunting for. Within the masterwork section, there are many routes we can take to benefit the weapon, because thankfully the weapon doesn't need a specific masterwork to make it better. We can either add more range to the weapon to push this damage drop off further, so you can compete and be more effective at around 30 to 40 plus meters. Or we can add a more stability for the weapon to make it even more accurate and allow our shots to be fully connected upon impact. Or even if you want to add on more handling for faster ADS timing, so you can start an end fight much more quicker on your end. It's honestly down to you as to how you want to go about this, but recommendation wise I would say more range is the key, as pulses are meant to cover mid to long ranges and this is what you want to expand on the most. The Adhortive has a 61 aim assist which you'll want to make full use of for long distances, so if we can focus on these two areas together then we'll have something very worth fighting for. Mod wise, for the mod side of things we can go a few areas with it depending on what type of content you're going to be playing. If you're going to be focused on PvP content I would recommend Radar Booster, Radar Tuner, Sprint Grip, Target Adjuster, 
counterbalance mod and rampage spec that all will have their pros and cons in PvP. PvE, you can either go with a Dragonfly, a backup mag, a Rampage spec, a minor, major or boss spec. But to be truthful, you're going to be looking into either Rampage or Dragonfly spec that offers something a little bit more useful in these type of contents. Now for the battles, we are given 9 to choose from, with all of them covering small, medium and long ranges. They all focus on a variety of areas, so we don't need to worry about being limited down to specific stats. But for the adhortive, we should be looking for improving on his range, stability, or recoil direction. So, what we should look out for is either small bomb, hammer forge, polygonal forge, corkscrew rifling, or fluted barrel. The sights for the weapon are static, so they don't change or affect your performance, but the barrel choices we've gone for all focus on improving the range, stability, or both, as these are the best categories for the weapon to extend in for pulse rifles in general. Fluted Barrel is quite a nice choice to go with if you're going to be focusing on PvP only, as it can provide fast ages and time against others, which for this weapon is a nice choice to pick. Now I recommend you go with this only if you currently think that your range and stability for the weapon is already good, and you think that having more faster handling and ADS and speed is going to basically win you more fights. Great choice to pick if you know you're going to be the one to start and mainly finish fights. Arrowhead Break is usually a good battle choice to pick for most weapons that have quite bad recoil direction, but in this case here, uh, it will push the weapon to a hard left instead of going vertical. Now if we add a count balance mod to it, then it changes the recoil to a vertical left, with little drift attached. So if you get a version with good perks, but you get this battle and another terrible one, then please remember this specific thing I just told you. Except from that, please avoid it at all costs. Otherwise, go with Arrowhead Break and then add on a Count Balance mod, and that then should at least ideally fix up the recoil direction. But if you don't have these things, stay clear away from this. Now within Column 2, we have a varied amount of perks to pick and choose from, but all this depends on what type of role and content you're looking to use them for. Now for PvP side of things, we have AP Rounds, which increases our range, High Caliber Rounds, that provides a slight buff in range, and Ricochet Rounds, which provide a buff in both stability and range. All these are prominent perks to have that are effective in usage in PvP. We also have Flare Magma, which is also a great perk to have for increasing our reload speed by plus 15 and the stability by plus 5. Now, this is suitable if you don't get Feeding Frenzy for the weapon, as the weapon reload speed is quite slow, but it is a perfect balance for both PvE and PvP, I've noticed. The rest of the mag choices left over focuses on more ammo for your magazine, which are more suitable for PvE content and can be extended to PvP as well. Extended Mag and Appended Mag are perfect for applying extra DPS against bosses or if you don't want to reload so much and don't have perks such as Feeding Frenzy to aid you. Now add in Field Prep for deeper ammo reserves or Genesis for a full stock on the Shield Break and you have a weapon that will carry you all the way from one endgame content to another. In Column 3 we have a wide variety of perks to choose. Feeding Frenzy for example is probably one of the most sought after perks for the weapon as it reduces your reload speed upon kills and for a weapon with average reload speed this is truly a godsend. Now, combine this with Rampage or Mort Kill Clip, and you have a God Roll that can be on par or even better than the Bygones, but only if you get the correct setup, which is quite rare for most people. We then have Fill Prep, which is always nice to have for both PvE or PvP, for the extra bonus in reload speed, stow, and ready speed while you're crouching. And then we have Firmly Planted, which is also a great perk to have if you want to make a weapon as stable as possible and focus on a more pure range setup with rangefinder aimed at you. But it's kind of rare to see most people use fill prep for the weapon, or even using firmly planted for crouching. Now I see firmly planted being mainly used by hunters if they're going to go either middle tree so they can make full use of their um, invisible class. Except from that, both perks are, like I said, they're both great for PvE and PvP, but they're not one of the top 10 perks that most people will actually get sought after. And then lastly we do have Genesis, which, okay, hear me out when I say this, it's a extremely underrated perk that has the opportunity to refill your magazine from reserve upon shield break, and also regenerate ammo depending on the weapon shield type applied to it. This perk can work well in PvE mode, such as Gambit, or the higher tier strikes, or raids, or gen anything that will have enemies that have shields, any type as it can allow you to save your heavy ammo for the more rigorous and annoying enemies. Plus, the fact that you get rewarded a full magazine upon any shield break, which is 
well, basically taken from your reserve, is actually a really great and um, probably a perfect perk to actually use, as it's basically keeping the momentum up on your end. Instead of you switching to your secondary, or instead of you needing to rely on another weapon to apply more DPS, you can just rely on this one perk here for any general energy perk that can roll this, and it will basically cover you in vast majority of your content. It's so underrated that I do not understand to this very date why most people don't use this for most PvE content. Now, rant over, it is a perk I wholeheartedly recommend you use, or at least have a weapon on standby, if you're in a situation where you don't have an effective shotgun, or if you don't have an effective fusion rifle, or sidearm, or generally anything that can help you with the more higher tier content with enemies that are going to be coming in with the shields by a dozen. We're then left with hipfire grip, which is useless, so don't even bother. And underdog is another, well I'll say another useless perk. These are two perks I'm trying to find out which are more perfect for other weapons, but hipfire grip and underdog, you could use it for PvE if you like, but you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot, so avoid it by all choice. Column 4, we have Rampage or Multi Kill Clip, which I don't need to even explain because you already know about what these two perks do. I've already explained it in the first bit. Generally, any damage improving buffing perks provided are a must have for any weapon. Then we have Range Finder, which is another perk that is both beneficial and helpful for extending your zoom application and range by a substantial amount. Now, like I said previously, if you're going to focus on stability and range for this weapon, Combine it with something like Firmly Planted, um, either Ricochet Rounds, High Caliber Rounds, or AP Rounds, Small Bore, generally any perks that provide more stability and range, and you gen generally you have something quite perfect to work with. Range Finder is another perk that's both beneficial and helpful for extending your zoom magnification by range by a substantial amount. Like I said previously, if you're going to focus on a stability or range build, for this weapon, what you want to look out for is combining it with something like firmly planted, ricochet rounds, high cover rounds, or AP rounds, and then small bore for the best of both worlds. We then have high impact reserves, which are good and provide a small damage buff the lower your magazine goes, but in terms of increasing our TDK, it's worth swapping if you get a version with Vampage or Multi Kill Clip. Now, I'm not saying to get rid of it, but I recommend that you keep one on hand but only if you don't manage to get one with, say for example, Rampage or Multi Kill Clip, which should technically not be that hard. Now, Head Seeker is the same as High Impact Reserves, where they provide a boost in damage, where, in this case here, a damage buff is provided via a body to precision shot. However, the damage isn't that noticeable or comparable to the likes of Rampage or Multi Kill Clip, so it's not a perk a lot of people will go after, but it's definitely a perfect perk to have either on rapid fire pulse rifles or the high impact pulse rifles, the ones where you either need to land a vast majority of shots quickly to finish them because the TDK on your side is much more weaker or your weapon is much more slower and you need a small buff in damage just to finish them where they may have say about 1% of HP left. That's where I've noticed they're most effective in at best. But except for the adaptive frames, outside of that, it's not really something you want to go for. And in general, general rule of thumb is if you get something that's got either rampage, kill clip, multi kill clip, swashbuckler, anything that's actually going to change your TDK, it's best to go with them instead of headseeker. And then finally, we have dragonfly, which is generally more of a PVE perk that can have its effective in PvP, but it's not really something you want to be using for an end game perk. Use it more for PvE, that's why I find it more effective in. Alright, so for conclusion, overall, the perks we want to be looking out for is a mouse work with stability or range plus 10, a mod with radar tuner or targeting adjuster or counterbalance mod, barrels being small ball or corkscrew, column 2 being ricochet or high color rounds, column 3 being feeder frenzy or fill prep. Column 4 being Rampage or Multi Kill Clip. The Adhorative has quite flexible and smooth stats out of the package, so we only really need to focus on controlling its recoil kick, range, and stability, which can all be easily done through a few perks or just generally through the first two columns. For PvE, this isn't much of a case as we can be more adventurous in terms of what perks we can choose to pick. 
but nonetheless, whatever perks you pick for PvP will generally benefit the weapon in PvP as well, and vice versa. The final God Roll perks for the weapon pick and cover the areas that the weapon really needs to cover, but except from that, its stats, like I said, are smooth and only need a small boost to push them over the required level or balance. And from there, whatever perks you get are honestly down to you, as long as you get the weapon's range and stability balanced out. I wouldn't say this weapon's stats are fully on par against the last pair edition, which is another popular energy at the frame, but it's the two perks, Feed and Frenzy and Rampage, or Mod Kill Clip, that seals the deal for this weapon, and what makes it honestly, in my opinion, the best energy pulse to have for Season 8, for the time being. Overall, I do hope this gives you a rough and um, basically a in-depth idea as to how well the weapon performs, as it really is a good pulse rifle to easily farm and use for all content. Its flexible stats, decent sized magazine and great perk combination is one of the top reasons why I recommend most new players to go ahead and farm for it until you get something like the Bygones later on or until you get lucky and get a more God Roll Last Pair Edition. Also, this does remind me of the No Time to Explain Pulse Rifle from D1, and it's a shame that we can't really fully replicate it through the perks, although that doesn't mean we can't try. So that comes to the end of the weapons review video and God War episode for this week. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the content then do leave a like, a sub and also do press the bell button to stay always updated to when I upload, as I appreciate a lot if you do. But like always, thanks for watching Guardians and I hope to see you again soon. Also. Be sure to check out my Twitter down below. See you later guys, bye!